Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Karcher Makes. Andrea here, and today we're gonna talk about Stephen West's surprise sock along, Clue One, the Color Popportunity Socks. And y'all, he never disappoints. I love how this pattern's turning out. I love my yarn choices. And if you saw the last video, you saw the analysis paralysis that was me trying to pick a color combo for these socks. Good news is I landed on a solution there. I love it and I love how these socks are turning out so far. So let's talk about the yarn first. I decided to go with, and if you follow me on Instagram, I'm also Karcher Makes there, but if you follow me there, you've already seen this, so no surprises here, but I picked the bubblegum colorway by Lily and Pine. I, I just, I kept thinking about it, and I really loved all of the colors that were in contention, but this one was just screaming at me, make these socks please turn me into these color opportunity socks. So went with the Lily and Pine. And then as the color pops, these are all leftovers from a TD Button Studio Advent. So this orange berry and then this really pretty teal. So these are the color choices. And what I've done here is I filmed some progress as I went along each part of Clue 1. So Clue 1 has four parts to it, four sections. And I tried to give a little taste of each section as we go, including, <laughs> including a, a, a part about how to fix mistakes. So in the, I believe it was the first section of Clue 1, I made a little mistake and I just kind of go through how I fix that and how to avoid it in the future. So hope you enjoy this video. If you just want to see the end result of Clue 1, feel free to fast forward ahead. That's fine. But otherwise, enjoy the progress and then we'll come back here after that and I'll show you my final finished Clue 1. Okay, everything is gathered. I have my needles and like I mentioned in the stash dive video, I'm going to be knitting these socks in tandem on two different needles. I suppose you could do those two at a time on a single really long magic loop. I, I can't be bothered by that. So I'll be doing them in tandem, two separate needles. And I reskeined, caked up my yarn in double batches so I split the hank I decided to go with the pink in case you didn't know and I split up the minis so that I can again kind of do them in tandem I have my pattern printed here and I should probably read through it before we start and I am seeing <laughs> no I'm seeing that we have to provisionally cast on 50 stitches and we're starting with the leg. Leave it to Steven to really kind of throw you for a loop on a sock. I was not expecting that. So I will be brushing up on my provisional cast on techniques before I get started here. Luckily Steven has a lot of videos that go along with all of his make-alongs and really a lot of his projects. He includes tutorial videos to help you with some of these techniques and I can say I appreciate that because just like this sock that apparently requires a provisional cast on, that's not something I do a lot and I just appreciate that he includes that video for us. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be back later, possibly tomorrow, to show you more. I am here on the third repeat of the first section, which is this waves section. And as I'm working across, 
uh, the third repeat of row three, which is the row where you're putting in the yarn overs and the knit two togethers, I realized I don't have enough stitches to complete my knit two togethers here. So I've made a mistake somewhere. I went backwards, I took a look, I recounted. Everything counts fine until you get to the end. But as I took a closer look, what I'm realizing is in this, and hopefully you can see this, in the second repeat of this uh, yarn over row, I must have dropped the yarn over here because here on the bottom row, you see the eight eyelets. On this one, I only have seven. So I must have dropped, and it's this last one here because you can see they're not lined up. I must have dropped that last yarn over. So I kind of have two options to move forward here. I can tink back a little bit to this point and just add another stitch. Okay, that's easy enough. Or I can drop down create a yarn over, get my eighth little eyelet here, and then just kind of ladder the yarn back up. Um, because this is stockinette and reverse stockinette, basically stockinette on both sides, I feel comfortable dropping down. If this was garter stitch, I would probably just pick up another stitch because garter, when fixing the rows, you have to know what side you're working on. So it makes it a little more complicated, but I think I'm going to drop down here, pick up that missing, create that missing yarn over so that I get my eighth little eyelet and then go from there. So let's do that. Okay. So here we are. I tinked back past the round of knit two togethers and I'm back here. I will need to remember to put the yarn over back after this one, but so we need to be able to create that new stitch here. So in between each one of these eyelets, you can see this knit stitch and there it is here. And then you can see where I'm missing the eyelet here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow this up. I'm going to move these three out of the way because they're fine. And then this is where we are missing the stitch. So I am going to attempt to drop down create a yarn over and then work the missing knits and pearls back up. So we get that missing stitch back here on the needle where it belongs. So let's, let's attempt that. Okay. And I have this small crochet hook. This is like an ancient, Susan Bates steel crochet hook, and I'm going to use that to catch this loop. And what I'm going to do is just going to grab my needle here. This is my second sock that is in progress because I'm doing these tandem, but I'm just going to stick my needle in here to keep that from running away. And then over here, we can see where we should have that eyelid stick. Okay. I ended up swapping that out with a stitch marker because the needle was getting in the way. But that's the stitch that we dropped down, and now I'm picking up a row of stitches beside it, starting with what should have been the yarn over. So I did that off camera just because I had to hold it close enough to see. So I picked up that first one. You can see it makes the little eyelet now. So now we're just going to 
carry these back up. So that we create what was the missing row of stitches. So now because the pattern changes from stockinette facing this way versus the reverse side, now that I've picked up this last stitch, I need to basically flip this. And this is the way I do it. Um, this is the way I was taught to do it. There's probably a million ways that are accurate and correct, but, and I know this is a little awkward to kind of see here, but basically I just turned my work so that I could do the remaining two stockinette stitches here. Okay, there he is. There's our missing stitch. So again, turning the work. Let's look at it from the front side. Put it on the needle. So now we've corrected that missing eyelet. And there it is. So now what we need to do, and this is where things are gonna get a little probably tight because we just used the slack yarn to make that missing row. And that's quite a bit of uh, tension that's now put on this yarn. So what we're gonna do is do the same exact thing with the stitch that I dropped down. So let's do that. So here we go. And like I said, this is going to be a little tight because we just used up a lot of yarn that was never intended to be used for stitches. And it's very difficult to see. Okay, because this was hard to see, um, for me to see, I went ahead and did it off of camera so I could actually see what I was doing. My eyesight's terrible. Move everybody back over where they belong. Add that yarn over back in, and now I should be back on track. So, let's see. Here's our second row of eyelets. You can see them there. There's the one we added. and then brought that drop stitch back up. So now we should be able to proceed with the correct number of stitches now that should get me the correct number of knit two togethers at the end of this row. So let's make sure that happens. So here we are at the end of the third row three repeat. And as you can see, I had now I have the right number of stitches to do my last four knit two togethers and then the slip one. So our little fix worked. Like I said, it's a little tight, but you know, it's a sock. It'll stretch out. It'll block, right? Isn't that the magic for everything? It'll block out. So there we go. All fixed, all better, ready to move on with the remainder of section one and then move on to section two. Okay, so let's talk a minute about how I could have avoided this mistake in the first place, because if we're not learning from our mistakes, then uh, we're destined to repeat them. So um, one thing that I need to do is, as I'm working across these yarn overs, make sure that I don't skip the last one um, on each section. And then two would just be doing a quick count once I finish the row. You can either count all the stitches or just take a look and just knowing that I'm, <laughs> I'm likely to miss this yarn over, just do like a quick count. Make sure I have the eight eyelets there. So yeah, just quick little checks like that will, will kind of help with, you know, either catching the mistake sooner or just not making the mistake at all, which would be amazing. I mean, nobody's perfect, but you know, we can all try. 
So section two of clue one is all finished. And like I mentioned, I'm doing my socks in tandem on two separate needles. So uh, there's one, there's the other. And next up for section three, we're gonna be adding in the color opportunities. I haven't decided yet which order they're gonna go in. I really honestly don't think it's going to matter too much. But I'll probably just do the maybe orange berry and then the teal. But here's a good look at the sections one and two of clue one. I really like how these are turning out. So I haven't read all the way to the end of the pattern yet, but I'm speculating on what's going to happen here. Um, so... He had us cast on 50 stitches, right? Provisional cast on 50 stitches, and it was the same amount for all sizes. So my <laughs> working theory is that we're actually going to turn this this way, vertically. Obviously, the rest of clue one is going in this direction. But once we're done, I think he's going to have us turn it that way and then wrap this into a tube to then join back around so that then this makes the leg of the sock. Which, if that's the case, that's amazing and I already love it. But we will see as we progress. Moving on to section three, clue one. Okay, here we are, finished with section three, the welt section of clue one. So let's take a closer look at what we have here. So this is the section where we introduced our color opportunities to our main color. And I have to say, I'm quite pleased with how this is turning out. I love how those look with this very lightly speckled bright pink color could not love it more so in an earlier segment of this i kind of talked about how i was guessing at the time without reading ahead that because we casted on 50 stitches for all sizes that my guess was we would probably turn this into a tube and then this would become the leg of the sock and now that I'm ready to start section four it looks like that's the case so I find that really interesting um I would never think to to basically turn a sock on its head and do it flat and then make a tube but I guess that's why I'm not an established designer like Mr. West who thinks of these beautiful intriguing techniques. So here we are, and now I will start section four, which are the chevrons, and then the final piece of this will be basically putting it together, I believe. So more to come, stay tuned. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed the progress of clue one of the summer surprise socks, the color opportunity socks. And I just finished the first sock. Now I am knitting these in tandem. The second one is currently sitting at section two, but I did finish the first one. And here we are, y'all. <laughs> Steven in these designs, like where does he get the ideas for this? So this is my finished clue one. We used all four colors on it and we used a couple techniques that I had never used before, starting with, and we're gonna go to the back here. I'm assuming this is the back. This could be the front. This could be the front. I don't know. We don't know, but I have it here on the sock blocker so you can see where the where the pieces in relation to a regular sock. So this is the leg part, but we started with provisionally casting on, and it's the side here, we provisionally casted on 50 stitches and then knit this whole thing flat and then came back and picked it up again, picked up the provisional cast on for this 
two color I cord bind off. So new techniques for me were the long tail provisional cast on. Never done that before. First time. Um, not real sure I'll do it again. It was a little finicky trying to pick it back up and unpick the waist yarn. Um, I think I may prefer a crochet provisional cast on, but I've only ever done those probably twice. So I don't know. I, I just don't have a lot of experience with provisional cast ons and this probably wasn't my favorite. But so we did the provisional cast on long tail style. That's what I followed exactly in his video amazing videos and then we progressed this way we did these lovely little welts here actually we went this way did these little welts i'm thinking i was thinking about these as we were making them i feel like we did a similar technique in his shawlography mystery knit along that shawl shawlography Pretty sure we did sort of a welt technique because it felt very familiar to me. But in any case, we did these neat little welts using our contrasting colors, our color opportunity colors, and then progressed around here to where we did this two color I cord bind off. Number one, I've never done a I cord bind off with a provisional cast on before so that was interesting um and <laughs> I've never done one two color I felt like I was channeling Lisa of 72 stitches if you follow her on, either on Instagram or her knit all the yarn podcast here on YouTube she has done these quite a few times and I've always been intrigued with how it actually works how to actually do it and now I know and I sort of love it. So I chose to do contrast colors one and two for that. Now, like I said, I'm assuming that maybe this is the front, maybe it's the side, I don't know. I feel like this would be the front though. That could be a total guess. But I'm really happy with how this turned out. And this is a really good example of where had I seen this pattern like on Ravelry or on Instagram or whatever, I would look at this and think that's way too hard. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so that's why I love the mystery knit alongs because you never know what's coming and you can always depend on Stephen West giving you some new techniques. So I'm, I'm happy that I have them. I'm happy that I'm doing them tandem two at a time because again the thought of doing all of this all over again from scratch is kind of daunting but I really like how it turns out and if you guys are doing the sock along as well leave a comment below. Tell me what you think about this construction of starting like mid leg like that's very interesting to me. Normally you start cuff down or toe up and here we are in the middle of what I believe is the leg and we're just gonna go from here so leave a comment below what do you think about this do you love this construction are you like this is too much and I can't do it let's talk about it so uh my my guess and this is just a guess obviously no one knows until Tuesday when the clue comes out but my guess is we may do the cuff next and then I don't know. I feel like this is kind of a short leg. So maybe there's going to be some, I'm going to move that up. Maybe there'll be a little bit more leg before we do the heel. I don't know. We're going to find out. We're all going to learn together and it's going to be amazing. So there you go. There is clue one of the surprise sock along socks, colored opportunity socks by Mr. Stephen West, West Nance. So the next few videos are going to be dedicated to finishing these socks and I'm going to try to do them similar to the way I've done this video which was kind of vloggy style with some added uh, clips as the socks kind of progress along. And you know if you find that interesting, you find that helpful, you enjoy it, you're entertained, please give this video a thumbs up and if you want to follow along with more progress on the color opportunity socks subscribe so you don't miss the next video i'm assuming i think i recall there's four clues in all so more videos to come on these lovely color opportunity socks and i hope to see you there next time and until then
Happy socking.